Hey everyone, welcome to another 6.5 on the road here at Cloudera Evolve or Evolve NYC. Another great session ahead of us, Pat. Uh, I'm Daniel Newman, Principal Analyst, Founding Partner at Future and Research, joined by Mr. Patrick Moorhead. How are you doing, my friend? MC, host extraordinaire. No, it's been a great uh, morning so far. Super exciting, uh, getting out there. We saw uh, Rob from Cloudera. We saw Rob, double Rob from IBM. Yeah. Saw Mike from EDM and Josh, the Wordle man. Yeah, the Wordle one was was super fun. I actually had to send the picture back to my wife and be like, because she plays every morning. That's like our, he talked about that kind of family bonding yeah, experience. Yeah. Um, she messages me every morning. I get up really early, I go to the gym, and she messages me when she wakes up with her Wordle score. That's so nice. She doesn't go with me, though, That's to the gym. Go. But uh, really excited about being here at Evolve NYC, this event put on by Cloudera in partnership with IBM and Intel. And we've got a great day of, of conversations here on the 6.5 and excited about this one. We've got uh, a couple of guest friends, uh, former uh, participants at the 6.5 Summit and Otho here. But Otho, Cindy, welcome to the show. Absolutely. Thanks for having us. It's a pleasure to be here. All right, yeah. so setting them up. You want me to set them up or you set them up? You set them up. Gosh. You're on a roll, buddy. We're just just keep going. I wanted to let you ask the uh, the good questions. I'll ask the know. easy one. Here's, here's a layup for you. Quick introduction. Tell everybody about your work at Cloudera. I'll start with you, Cindy. Sure. Cindy Mikey, I lead our industry value management and our business product solutions area. Been with the company for about eight years. And I'm a recovering accountant. <laughs> there we go. There. I'm the data person in the group. Now I know in why the group, you asked At Cloudera, me. being the data person is a pretty big thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's, an it's an important thing. Yeah. yeah. And I'm Otho Lyon. I'm a global VP of a support. I'm the fixer. So I fix all of the problems. I hear them all. I love it. So the two of you are on the front line, Cindy Industries, Otho with support, yep. uh, fixing all of it. Uh, I'm going to start off with, with probably maybe we'll start with you, Otho, on what are some of the key challenges that your customers are expressing uh, to you r right now? Right, yeah. Some of it, you know, obviously, you know, we're going from CDH to CDP. Customers are um, kind of holding back because, one, they can't get the equipment. And uh, two, you know, they're kind of looking at the cloud. Some of them are getting their bill from the cloud. And so it's like, okay, so let's figure out our cloud strategy. So, right. yeah, they're struggling with that right now. So we're having to kind of help them. You know, we're, we're massaging them through, hey, well, let's get you to CDP as quick as possible as soon as you get that equipment. So we can get you, get you going. Yeah, it's interesting. I didn't even know this until uh, I was doing my planning to, to kick off the show here. I was talking about the cloud as if everybody's using the cloud, right. but it's like, hey, Pat, not everybody in the audience will have gone to the cloud. And as Daniel expressed uh, in, a, in a previous video, uh, your customers in Cloudera on, on our a, a very similar uh, uh, journey mm -hmm. uh, as you. Uh, Cindy, how, yeah, Cindy, how, how about you? How are they expressing these needs to you? Maybe. In a, in a vertical fashion or any differences between them? Yeah, you know, what's I think what's really transpired in the last, you know, two, three years, um, you know, just from a pandemic perspective is, you know, there's the need for business, the unknowns. You know, how do we plan businesses? What are the, what are the processes? How do we know if we're going to make money? How are we going to get new insights? Um, and then we also go, now we're looking at, you know, an economic uncertainty period and people are going, I want some predictability. So we went from, highly unpredictable to now it's like, yeah, we need to ratchet it back. And from a business perspective, they're like, IT people, you just go figure this platform stuff out. We've got different types of business challenges that we're dealing with every day. So just make sure whatever you design is flexible to meet our needs. So, so Cindy, you said something and we had a little, you know, we always have great green room conversations and not everybody out there always gets to hear what we talk about. But Maybe we should do that. Something bloopers um, yeah. <laughs> something that you know you uh, kind of expressed that, that, caught, that piqued my interest but you said something along the lines of you know a question about kind of did innovation accelerate or stall as it pertains to the data environment because obviously we've heard so much you know digital transformation accelerated by five years or three weeks or seven hours stats are constantly made up without any validation right well they say like 63 percent of statistics are made up on the spot right but we've heard a lot of those various kind of anecdotes about how much, but in your world, did you see that? Did the pandemic actually speed the migration to the cloud? Did it slow it? Did people grasp on longer to what they already had? Kind of what was your sort of view of how quick things moved during the pandemic? Well, you know, I think from a couple different fronts, I'll look at it from a little bit from the healthcare side. You know, pre-pandemic, the notion of telehealth, um, insurance companies didn't want to pay for telehealth. 
Um, and then you think about how did you provide care? And you're like, now I got data coming in from the edge because the insurance companies, the uh, provider said, we got to do this telehealth stuff because we're not having people in the office. So how do you collect that edge data? That data is going to go to the cloud. It's not going to probably go straight to a data center because people are getting services out on, um, you know, in their home. Mm -hmm. So that's where people are like, hey, I got to think about these things differently. Um, so I think that accelerated it. The fact that people started to work from home, um, and you look at what happened with, you know, we had a, a, a telecom provider um, in the Netherlands that they're like, how do we rebalance this network stuff from going from all the services need to be yes. in the office to how do we shift this to services are provided on broadband in the home? And so all the network optimization, those were decisions like, eh, can we do this in the data center to do it in the cloud or do we do it in a combination? So it's those type of examples that I think show us that you got to have innovation on thinking about where data is going to be. It feels like accelerated, right? Yeah. So, you know, and that feeling of acceleration, you know, now customers, you know, coming out of the pandemic now, now we're looking at, okay, what is the next? Because of this acceleration, companies are starting to look at the costs versus the benefits. And when, you know, especially with cloud era now, is, it, is, is the hybrid model? Is that the better model than just a pure cloud play? So, uh, Cloudera has been on a rocket ship journey the past couple years. Uh, CDPH, uh, CDP Cloud, and now you know we're looking at CDP One. Mm -hmm. And Otho, I would I would imagine that that kind of changes your your look in in. And again, I don't know if most if you get more emails or messages or incoming calls or, or how your model works. I'm curious. Um, how, how are you looking at your job and your role has changed as with the evolution of the company? I would imagine as you open the aperture to more people who know how to use CDP, particularly with CDP One and with CDP Cloud, out with AWS and GCP and Azure, your job has changed a lot. Yeah, so you know, if you look at it now, you know, it's no longer that traditional support model. You know, that monolith, you know, you, all these cases coming in. Now it's customers want to experience. And so we're actually shifting to a customer experience model. You know, to your point, you said customers are smarter now and, right. the, and they're using software, you know, so they want people to help them to use the software. And so, you know, you, maybe you offer more services like TAMs and things of that nature to sit with customers and help them consume or either understand what we're trying to do. So, you know, the shift has, in cloud era, is, is happening right now. We're in that, that shift and I'm excited about it because you know, now it's no longer all about that break fix. Yeah. Let me help you enjoy what you're doing with our product. And that's the thing I like because those conversations are a lot easier when you're like, oh, I like this product because, you know, hey, you showed me, you know, your TAM showed me how to use this product versus, hey, this thing is broken, it's down, you know, I need it back up, my dashboard is broken, you know. Those are, those are very unpleasant conversations. Yeah, so it's almost like you've gone from you know, uh, a bag of car parts, which, you know, people were assembling to put together uh, to do that. And by the way, the car stayed in one place, typically. Uh, to, you know, car getting on the highway to now an Uber type model with uh, CDP1. Right. So, and, and by the way, I can also imagine some people are like, I don't want anything to change, right? What do you mean you're going to open up CDP, Cloudera, to the rest of the organization? This is this is mine. Do they ever cry on your shoulder or you know uh, t talk to you about this? You know, I, you know, I, I'm, I always give out free hugs. I'm, just, I'm <laughs> one of those guys. I give out free hugs, but you light, know, light ones. Though, yeah, right? light ones, light okay. ones. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you know, the the shift. You know, there has been this shift from you know where it was you know, specific organizations and they were kind of the data folks. Now you got the BI folks and all the analysts and they're like, oh, we got these new tools that we can use, right. which makes it easier. And, and here's the other thing, I can help you self-serve if things break. So it becomes, like, the, like I say, the conversation becomes a lot better now <laughs> because these folks are like, hey, just make it work. And that's the other thing, just make it work. We don't yes. want to go through all the frills, just make it work. The experience. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> so. When they're done crying on your shoulder, and, and what I genuinely do think ha is happening is, you know, effectively, roles are just changing and evolving. Right. I mean, we're here at Evolve, but I mean, they really are. If you were a prem person, you are 
you know, quickly having to adapt to the fact that there will be multiple clouds. Right. And you will be dealing with data from multiple sources. We talked about you're structured, I'm unstructured. But in the sense of that is data, and by the way, the world is moving to a place where all data needs to be part of the equation to solving customer problems. One of the things that I think has been really important in solving problems, Cindy, is the vertical uh, veneer moving to a vertical solution, meaning I feel like a lot of companies during the pandemic went to vertical focused marketing. I feel like some companies actually came out with vertical solutions, meaning that you know it was a lot of you know, architecture, I like that word. Talk about that, it's your part of your role with leading industries. Cloudera working with data on-prem, healthcare, finance, um, manufacturing, you're in industries that tend to be very regulated, very compliance driven, a lot of residency, sovereignty issues. Talk about how you've really built that out to drive Cloudera for verticals. Yeah, so when you look at the, those types of business problems and also you look at who, the, who is the person that actually needs the analytical insights, yeah. it's the business. Um, and how do you, and the business people, and I, I go back to myself as being an accountant, it's like I've always dealt with data. And now it's kind of like, you know, different types of data. And you're like, just give me the data and I'll do with it what I want. Right. Because I don't want IT telling me what to do with the data. So within that, it's how do you then make what we do as a product and platform perspective consumable by the folks that really need the insights. So we're building out industry reference architectures. You're looking at those use cases that you need. So if it's looking at you know, a manufacturer within remote asset monitoring to um, doing quality analytics to predictive maintenance, here's how you actually do that and basically just bring your data. Here's the types of data sources. Here's the adapters that you need. Here's the amps. Here's the applied um, machine learning protocols that you would use. So really making it easier for the end user to um, embrace the, the technology. Yeah, Othel, I'm curious if this, does verticalization impact your role and what you do and, and how you provide these customers with the experience? Right, it, it helps to understand, especially when you're talking about regulating industries and things of that nature, it helps for me to know where I can and cannot support from, but at the same time, I can have someone that, you know, we have something called premier support, and we, those folks are specialists with that customer, so it's good for them to understand what they're dealing with in the industry, you know. Public sector is another one, you know, so, yeah, it very much the information that she gathers helps us to provide a better customer experience. Yeah, in the end, it's all about tying it together. I think, uh, you know, my guess, and maybe y'all can validate, is that the highly regulated have the most complexity and probably come with the most challenges, but they're also in many ways the most incented to find the balance. You know, a lot of companies that are in maybe some of these less regulated industries have maybe been those that have first run to the born on cloud type of stuff because they have all that flexibility. You're, you showed the injuries and Horowitz about how right. small startup companies can go to a pure cloud consumption only base. But um, you know what, I actually that just made me think of a question. Yeah. Um, as you scale the, the, the data, um, and Cindy, as you're working with the, the industries, do you find that the move to cloud is opening doors to new customers in these new industries to, to check out Cloudera? Are you seeing a, a migration of 2,000 plus, you know, instead of just 500, Fortune 500 companies starting to Oh, absolutely. Um, and also just like what we're doing with CDP1, um, and you look at certain types of industries where they're like, you know, we don't have those type of technical skill sets to deal with a big right. data type platform, but we they need that. So how do you make that available to them? And you provide those things, like I talked about the reference architecture. So absolutely a new type of environment um, where we see those opportunities and, and growth. Um, and honestly, there's even, you know, we talk about the size of a company. There's certain industries that are like, you know what, we're not a FANG technology company. You know, we don't employ those skill sets, um, but we need those same types of insights, so. So, been a great conversation so far. We're going to do a speed round, okay? I'm going to ask each of you, if you, you know, deal with customers every single day, every single hour, what are top three words of advice from moving where you are today to where you are tomorrow? And I know they're not all in the same place, but we'll generalize. Otho, we'll start with you. You know, I, one of the big things is, you know, when folks call me is, you know, it's nice to know that they have a data plan. 
you know, that they understand where they want, what they want to do with the data and where they want to go, whether it's going to be hybrid or whether it's going to be cloud. A lot of times they call and it's like, we, we're just broken. Right. And I'm like, okay, what are you trying to do? What is the use cases? And, and so I have to, we have to always kind of start picking through everything that's, you know, we're starting from the beginning. So if you have all that up front, that helps me solve your, your, right. your problem faster. Appreciate that. Yeah. And I would say, understand what business questions you're trying to answer, what data do you need, what's that data landscape, and what's the best infrastructure to support that data landscape. Well, I love it. Your advice is very consistent. It all, all started off with what you want to actually do with that, and that's not always the case. Sometimes it's tech technology first. So, Otho and Cindy, I want to thank you for coming on the 6.5. It's great to have you on. Good We'd love to have you on again to talk about your future journeys and everything you're learning about your customers. So thank you so much for being on. Thanks Sounds for having good. us. Thank you so much. Thanks. So for the 6.5, this is Pat Moorhead and Daniel Newman signing off from Cloudera Evolve 2022 here live in New York City. We're back, yay! If you like what you heard, hit that subscribe button. Signing off, have a great day.